hear me? So my name is Tim Smith, I'm Publishing Manager at IAP Publishing, um, and one of my responsibilities there is in developing um, our overall material science journals program. Um, and I'd like to begin just by thanking the organisers for giving me the opportunity to speak at this key conference and as part of this panel session alongside Physical Review Letters um, and Nature. Um, unlike the previous presentations, which have discussed established and prestigious journals <coughs> that are already publishing in graphene and related materials, I'm going to be talking about a brand new journal launch for 2014, uh, a new multidisciplinary type of MIP publishing um, that is designed solely to serve all researchers that are working on all classes of two-dimensional materials, and we really hope that this will provide and become a valuable new publishing option for your community. So I'd just like to spend a, a, a minute just talking about the rationale for why we went ahead and launched 2D materials. Um, you, know, you don't need me or anybody else to tell you what an extraordinary um, growth in research output the last decade has seen since 2004 in terms of graphene papers. Um, you can see in the graph there, year-upon-year year growth in the number of articles that mention graphene in the abstract, culminating in 2013 to getting on to 9,000 articles, all of which were scattered across more than 150 journals. Um, and the field and the character of the field has also become increasingly multidisciplinary, moving on from studies of the fundamental science of graphene towards novel applications and also the challenge of fabricating graphene and 2D materials on a large scale. Yet despite this character and despite these numbers, in 2013 there didn't yet exist a journal devoted solely to this community. And so the question that we at IP Publishing asked was whether a journal would be timely and valuable for the community and whether it was the right time to recognise graphene um, as an established field in its own right. So we asked that question internally. The next step in the process was then to actually consult with the community, which we did through actually a number of you in the room here. Um, where we, we, we asked widely whether it would be timely to indeed launch a journal initially devoted just to graphene. And the overwhelming response was that yes, the field had become sufficiently mature for a journal uh, devoted to this field to, to be valuable. However, in order to maximise its value, it must have a number of key characteristics. And these included that the subject scope should actually extend beyond graphene to the newly emerging 2D materials. Um, it should be a truly multidisciplinary journal, that is its coverage should bridge not only the fundamental properties <coughs> of these materials, but also extend to novel applications and, as I mentioned, the challenge of actually producing these materials um, on a large scale. High quality standards, absolutely essential in terms of the, the, the rigour and the, and, and, uh, of the peer review process, and also recognising the very competitive nature of the field, um, the feedback was that rapid publication would be an essential asset for a new journal <coughs> in this field. And there was also considerable interest in a journal that would provide opportunities for authors to achieve post-publication um, visibility raising activities or, or opportunities to achieve certain outreach aims um, that are increasingly important to researchers. So it was in light of that feedback and ongoing consultation with the community that in September 2013 we went ahead and announced the launch of 2D materials, headed up by Vladimir Falco as editor-in-chief and regional editors Byung Hee Hong and, uh, and Tony Hines. And I'd just like to sort of spend a few minutes now talking about some of the key characteristics of this journal and how that consultation with the community um, uh, resulted in the, in, the, in the scope and the characteristics that we now see. So in terms of the aims and scope, multidisciplinary became a really key um, feature that the journal had to become. So really ensuring that the wide range of research communities that now engage uh, with 2D materials extending across physics, chemistry, biology, medicine and engineering would be served by this journal. So the specific areas that are of interest to 2D materials absolutely include studies of the fundamental properties of these, of these 2D crystals, but also all applications extending not only to the electrical and mechanical engineering, but also to pharmacology and medicine. We're also really interested in receiving contributions addressing the challenge of actually synthesizing and processing 2D materials uh, on an industrial scale. Um, novel combinations of 2D, 2D, 2D materials to form heterostructures also very much fall within the scope. And of course, so the new undiscovered 2D materials that are yet to, be, um, yet to be reported on. So in terms of the journal characteristics as they currently stand, multidisciplinary, a, number, a, a, a word that I'm going to use rather a lot, is, 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 is certainly a key kind of fundamental uh, platform to the journal and the rationale for its launch. The journal also imposes very high quality standards in terms of the expectations around the originality of the work and the advance 
um, that, the, that the results are making in a particular subfield within 2D materials. Rapid publication we see as a key asset to achieve for the journal, but not at the compromise of rigour within the peer review process. As an electronic only journal, um, we're aiming to position 2D materials in, in terms of novel content streams, and I'll finish the presentation with a uh, uh, a brief discussion of one example of that. Um, it's a traditional subscription journal but includes a, a, an open access option so that researchers who need to publish on an open access basis to meet funding body mandates can do so in the journal. And video abstracts and other multimedia we see as becoming an increasingly important part of the journal and its content stream into the future and I'll touch on that a little bit later on. So in terms of the target audience for 2D materials, we're talking about the academic community sending across physics, chemistry, biology, medicine and engineering, but also extending to the industrial sector as well, R&D scientists, technologists, and product design and development engineers. In terms of the article types that we publish, we have four. Letters, which represent short, high-impact, breakthrough results requiring fast publication. We also publish length, unlimited research papers, again with the requirement that they report new results that make significant advances in the field. Perspectives, commissioned by the editorial board, um, from leading figures in the field um, designed to highlight particular content in the journal and put it into the broader context um, within what we hope to be the multidisciplinary reach of the journal. And also commissioned only topical reviews as identified by the editorial board that provide snapshots of fast moving <coughs> fields um, in key areas within, within 2D materials. So what's the story so far? Well, we announced it in, two, in September 2013 and we published the first content in April of this year. To date, 13 articles uh, are now live, and on average, when we look at the full text downloads, it's a little bit early to talk about citations, we're actually seeing that uh, there are more than uh, uh, 1,200 full text downloads per article published so far. And just to put that into the context of IOP publishing portfolio, that puts 2D at an article level already in the top three uh, journals in our portfolio. The rejection rate so far is of the order of 80%, perhaps a reflection of the very strict peer review standards that we're imposing from the outset. And in terms of publication speed, we think actually we can make improvements here. Um, but our receipt to first decision times on average uh, are 27 days, and receipt to acceptance times are 62 days. And uh, four of the first articles already include, uh, include video abstracts, this content stream, which I'll touch on uh, in a moment. One of the challenges that we see for 2D materials, if we're really um, serious about becoming multidisciplinary, is ensuring that the scope and the coverage of the journal really covers the kind of topics that are going to make it a single place for, for, for the entire community to come to. And uh, already over, throughout the course of 2014 and 2015 we have a, a focus issue program in place that includes the, the areas there on the screen with, with guest editors in place. Um, I'm not going to go through each of, those in, each of those in detail, but the way in which we publish focus collections in 2D materials is one example of where we can take advantage of the electronic only medium. What we can do with the focus collections is essentially open them as soon as we publish the first contribution so that people that are invited to, to uh, submit to a focus collection aren't penalised by later contributions and it also means we can be flexible with the submission deadline and actually keep focus collections open for as long as we think that collection is timely to the community. One particular collection, however, I would like to just point out um, is the focus collection that we are publishing in connection with Graphene Week and we're delighted and honoured to say a collection that is also endorsed by the Graphene flagship. So this is a focus issue with a rather broad title, Progress on the Science and Applications of 2D Materials and essentially everybody at this conference who has given an oral presentation would have already received an invitation to submit to this focus issue um, and if you have any questions about that I'm around after the talk today but also for the whole of tomorrow so any questions that you might have about that issue submission deadlines and, and the publication schedule, um, please come and find me at the IP booth just outside the, outside the lecture theatre. So just to finish off, I'd like to touch on what are the novel content streams that 2D materials will have. It's, it's, it's kind of novel, novel, we think, for the community, but not uh, the first journal within, within IP publishing's portfolio to include them, and they are uh, video abstracts. So this is something we launched on New Journal Physics back in 2011 as something of a pilot. Um, and really video abstracts are aimed at providing authors uh, with the opportunity to go beyond the constraints of the print article to convey pot potentially complex uh, results uh, and, and principles to a broad audience in ways that you know, static images, equations and text can't convey in the, in, in the written article. 
Um, so we saw the take from New Journal of Physics initially, um, and, and it, was, it, was, it, was, it was pretty high. It provided a real opportunity for authors to also convey their enthusiasm for their work and to raise their overall profile and visibility. And it's also aligned with kind of an overall strategy to ensure that the visibility of work that we publish is as high as possible. And it also feeds into the, into the potential requirements that researchers have to achieve certain outreach aims. And to maximise the visibility of this content, it's integrated as part of a full text article. Um, and I guess one key statistic to perhaps highlight around video abstracts <coughs> is that when we look at the full text download figures for those articles with a video compared to those without, we actually see that the downloads are three times higher for those articles with a video. Now, there are other factors at play, but we're also convinced that video abstracts serve a key purpose, not only in providing novel and alternative um, content to, to, to enhance the user experience, but also actually in driving readership to the article itself. And we also see a correlation between video abstracts and the likelihood for an article to be covered um, in the wider media. So there, the screenshot there just shows an example of the, what one of the video abstracts already published in 2D materials and how it's embedded, um, embedded at the abstract level. So in summary, just to finish off, um, and to sort of state the obvious, um, research in two-dimensional material does now involve thousands of scientists um, extending right across physics, chemistry, engineering, medicine, and biology. And it's essentially that situation that has defined the scope and the rationale for launching 2D materials as a multidisciplinary journal which is committed to publishing essentially only urgent research of the highest quality and impact that's of, that's of, of essential importance to the community. It's at a very early stage. Um, and um, uh, in terms of the envisaged author benefits that we have, strict quality assurance, rapid publication, ensuring that we're truly multidisciplinary and that, and that we offer authors the opportunity for their work to be conveyed outside the perhaps a traditional route of existing journals, and also the opportunities we have in terms of post-publication exposure through video abstracts, but also the other avenues that we have at IIP, such as Physics World and the community websites that we publish um, in areas um, relevant to 2D materials. So on a final point, I'd just like to express thanks to the Graphene flagship in terms of their endorsement for the journal and the focus issue that we're publishing in relation to Graphene Week, and also to the list of editorial board members that we have aligned with the journal who have been so crucial in defining the scope, um, the initial strategy, and, and the direction of the journal to this, uh, at this early stage. And I really hope that this becomes a valuable journal for you in terms of new publishing options. Um, and at that point, I'd like to thank you also for your attention. Thanks.